Welcome back to Inside Elgin. As I sit here beside the fireplace, I feel like I could just curl up and have a little nap. Pretty easy to do when you're in front of a fireplace, but for some people, it's not easy to fall asleep just like that. And we have Dr. Peggy Malone here who's gonna give us some tips and tricks on how to have a good night's sleep, which would translate into a much smoother, nicer day for everybody. Dr. Peggy, thank you very much for coming back to speak to us. Thank you for having me as always. So nowadays, busy lives, everybody's busy with their kids, busy with their jobs, minds are going like crazy. So you go down to lay down at night and you've got a hundred things running through your head about what you have to do the next day. That doesn't translate into a good next day. Not at, not all. at all, no. You want to share a few of your ideas on some of the different ways that we can make sure that we get a good night's sleep? Okay, yeah, absolutely. And the first thing is to give people a little bit of awareness of why we don't sleep, because that sort of is the first step always, knowledge. Um, so sleep hygiene is when you change behaviors or you implement certain things into your life so you get better sleep. And sleep disturbances or insomnia is a problem. 30 million Canadians will report that they don't sleep well, that they, ha they wake up once they go to sleep. They just don't get a good quality night's sleep. And over half of us don't get enough quality sleep. So it's a problem. And if you, especially if you have a spouse, like myself, who has trouble sleeping through the night and, and wakes up you know, two or three times for a couple hours, it affects the other person as Absolutely, well, right? Yeah. You're, not, you're not getting that full night's rest all the way through. What about uh, your biological clock and your circadian rhythms? Does that have a lot to do? Can we adjust that and, and work on yeah. that? That's something that's really important to know about because your circadian rhythm, essentially there's environmental cues that your body responds to so that it knows when it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to wake up. So the most important cue that your body responds to is light. So it used to be that that was just sunlight. When the sun came up, we would wake up. When the sun went down, we'd go to sleep. Uh, and that's a little more difficult in our world where obviously some of us wake up before the sun comes up and a lot of us go to sleep after the sun goes down. Yeah. So man-made light is also a cue that your brain will listen to in this rhythm. When you, when it's time to get sleepy, or when it's time for bed, your body, your brain produces a hormone called melatonin. It's your sleepy hormone. So mm -hmm. you get this melatonin, you go to sleep. In the morning when it starts to get light, your brain suppresses melatonin and you wake up. The problem that a lot of people have is, instead of sleeping in dark and then being awake in light, we have all these external lights in our world. So a big part of sleep hygiene is creating a dark environment to sleep in. So no TV, no cell phones, mm -hmm. no uh, flashing lights, closing the blinds so we don't see the outside lights. All of those things will really help you to sleep better. So, or buy a cave. <laughs> There's that. I don't know where I came <laughs> up with that. Um, now during the day, you know, people, I know in Europe it's big to have their businesses let their people sleep for a little bit, have a little nap during the day. I want you to talk to us about whether that's a good thing or not, and maybe if, it, if it's not, or it is, how long we can do that for. We'll do that right after the break. We'll be back with Dr. Peggy Malone. We're going to talk about uh, how to get a better night's sleep. We'll be right back. Good night. Welcome back to Inside Elgin. Mike Vecchio sitting with Dr. Peggy Malone, and we're talking about having a nap. Not together, just whether we should do it during the day or not. <laughs> we have to make it fun. <laughs> so napping, is it okay to do during the day, Peggy? And if so, how long should we do that for? If you are somebody who really has trouble sleeping at night, you should try to avoid napping during the day. If you absolutely must nap, you want to keep it under 30 minutes because that'll just give you a little bit of a, ref of a refresher mm -hmm. without putting you into your deep sleep. So then that's going to affect your quality sleep at night. So okay. tiny naps if you're going to take a nap during the day. Okay, that's your free tip of the day from Inside Elgin and Dr. Peggy Malone. Now let's talk about your sleep environment. You did mention about how you should have blinds up to keep the light out, uh, no electronics, that type of thing. Can you expand on that a little bit more? Tell us some more about that. Well, there's two reasons you don't want to have electronics. Number one, because of the light issue. So mm -hmm. your brain's going to get the message it's time to wake up if there's any light in the room. The other thing is that it's going to be stimulating to have uh, different things in your room. So you want to make sure you have sort of a calm environment that's quiet. So TV is out and uh, having your alarm clock beside your bed. If mm -hmm. you were somebody who's a warrior and wakes up in the night, you'll look at your alarm clock and go oh no it's three o'clock and then you'll worry about the fact that it's three o'clock and you're not sleeping so yeah. hide your alarm clock it's only there to wake you up it's not to remind you that you're not sleeping so that's why you want to turn it around so you don't have the light number one and you don't have the worry number two so that's a really great tip okay i hate that when you wake up and you realize you've got about five minutes left before your alarm goes off ah, so frustrating uh, i guess your bed would be important too and the type of pillow that you have make sure that everything is uh is good for your particular body yeah, you want to you know, avoid pain because that'll have an effect on sleeping as well. So you want to be comfortable in your bed. I could do a whole show talking about pillows and beds, but uh, absolutely you want to make sure it's a good bed for you, a good pillow for you. Okay. Now, better sleep rituals. We need uh, a ritual going to bed at the same time, trying to wake up at the same time. Sometimes easier said than done, but tell, talk to us a little bit about that. You want to prepare your body to let your body know it's soon it's going to be time to go to bed and you're more likely to fall asleep easily if that's the case, which means that within the half hour, hour before bed, you want to start turning off your lights and your electronics. 
remind your brain, oh yeah, it's time for sleep soon. You want to maybe read a book, have a warm cup of tea, uh, sit in a hot bath or a hot tub just to kind of like give yourself a nice calming environment before you go to bed. Some people that have those worries or stresses going on, and this is good for kids too that have trouble sleeping or that are worried, have a diary where you can write down your worries and sort of release them out of your brain, put them beside your bed, go to sleep so that you're not thinking about them. That's a great idea. So, uh, <laughs> so that's a good one. Um, making sure you don't eat tons of heavy food before bed, making sure you don't have caffeine or alcohol within the three hours before bedtime. <laughs> so six glasses of wine before bed won't make you sleep? <laughs> it might make you pass out, which is yeah. different than getting good quality sleep. Well, that's a good point. And then you're not, you're actually not getting right into the deepest part of your letting your brain rest. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Alcohol will mess with your rapid eye movement or your, your, the sleep that you need to get good quality sleep. So, okay. so that's something that's a good thing to know as well. What do you suggest to somebody like, oh, I don't know, my wife that does wake <laughs> up at two or three in the morning and just has her head. Is that still a time to write things down? If she's got things, what she, what she has to do tomorrow, yeah. write it down then and then forget about it. If it's possible, keep the lights dim. <laughs> Because as soon as you turn on the light, your brain goes, okay, time to wake up. So this is like even getting up to go pee in the middle of the night. Don't turn the light on in the bathroom. Have a dim light or have like a night light. <laughs> and make sure that if you can't sleep and you're really worried, get up and do something, whether that's write in your worry diary or read a book or, um, you know, do something other than worry about sleeping, then come back to bed when you're sleepy again. But it shouldn't be too stimulating like television right, or something Right, like you want that. it to make sure that it's calming. Sort of similar, go back to your bedtime ritual, like have a warm cup of tea or like read your book or whatever it is that's calming for you. Okay. Is it good to exercise prior to bed going for a walk? Is that, does that get your body pumped up or does that? Exercise is a, a great thing to help you with your sleep quality, but it should be done earlier in the day because when you do it within a couple of hours before bed, it can be stimulating. So that's why definitely exercise for sure will help people to sleep better if they're having trouble with sleep, but do it earlier in the day or within sort of before three hours before bed. Okay. What about, I always like to have a little bit of a snack before I go to bed. Is it okay to have a snack, let alone having a big meal? Is that going to affect your sleep? Probably a little snack is okay, and things like, you know, they'll, they'll recommend warm tea, warm milk. Milk has some hormonal stuff in it that'll help you to get sleepy. Uh, so as long as it's light, you don't want your guts to have to give you that cue that it's supper time, which mm -hmm. means I'm not sleeping for a while, and blood's going to go away from, um, you know, your other muscles to start doing some stimulating digestion. You don't want any of that either. So a tiny snack is okay, absolutely. Okay. We are a society of pills, medicine. We can take whatever, whatever ails us, we can take a pill for it. Do you suggest using uh, sleep aids as well? Over-the-counter sleep aids and sleep aids in general. If you are, are you somebody who has some stuff going on in your world, talk to your medical doctor about the fact that medications can be helpful for some people for short periods of time. Okay. But the bigger problem, the bigger picture is about, you know, all the overstimulating extra light we have, all the overstimulating stress we have. Over-the-counter sleep aids that you can use occasionally shouldn't be used long-term because okay. they'll cause issues with your quality sleep. Perfect. Peggy, thank you very much for uh, telling us about how to sleep properly. Thanks very much. All right, so take those tips and have a great night's sleep tonight. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us. <laughs>